the Galtee Mountain region. American Tipperary is the setting for the second round of the Macaulay Trailers National Forest Rally Championship. The Tipperary Car and Motorcycle Club are host to this, the second round of the National Forestry Rally Championship. Over the 50 stage miles of forestry roads here in Mitchellstown, drivers will be faced with extremely bumpy gravel surfaces, which they must treat with respect and caution over the first loop of stages. Kevin Lynch took victory in the last round in Carrick. Let's see, can he come up with that winning form? Kevin, you seem to be the man of the moment. You won the last round in Carrick and you're fresh from your victory in Roscommon. Do you think you'll be able to make it a third win here today? Uh, it'll, it'll be difficult enough. Like uh, Brian Murphy, John McCarthy, James Murphy, uh, Kevin McCain, they're all good in the forest and they're good drivers, take nothing away from them. And I'll be pushing as hard as I can, but it's sometimes hard to beat the experience and these men certainly know what they're at. But I'll be trying to put it up to them as best I can. Brian, a great performance in Carrick, just losing by a mere five seconds. Do you think you might stick to the driving? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, my priority this year is uh, navigating for Austin McHale and this just, it's on an, an odd Sunday and, you know, I said I'd do the, probably the, I said I'd do the first round of the championship, now I said I'd do the second and I'll do the third. So we'll, we'll definitely take stock after the third and see how we get on. John, unfortunately you didn't get too far in the last round in Carrick. Will you be looking for a better result here today in Mitchellstown? Yeah, today every day out is uh, the next result and the best result you can hope for. Carrick, we were disappointed. Um, the car is, there's an awful lot to be got from this car. It's not going to happen today or tomorrow. Then this is your first sparsity rally to do down south. What enticed you to come down here and compete? Well, we were looking for something new. The forest down here is supposed to be very good. The competition is very good. Uh, my navigator, Derek Brannigan, thought it was the place to go, so we're here today. And you're driving a very popular Metro 604. How do you think this car will get on in forestry roads down here? Well, in general, if it's uh, flowing stage, not too bumpy, these are good cars for these forests. Come on, Wood, the event opener for many years, sets the benchmark for performance of the competitors for the rest of the event. Stage 2, situated in Knockmail Down Mountain Complex, this stage hasn't been used for 12 years, so it could have some surprises for the drivers. Surprisingly enough, the foggy conditions posed no problems for the drivers. Kevin Lynch and Francis Wiegan are the top seeds. The posted time of 7 minutes 9 seconds on the opening stage. Current series leaders Brian Murphy and Joe Downey are a mere two seconds faster in the older spec Impreza. James Murphy and Con Mulcahy post second fastest time on the combo on board stage with their escort and are actually driving a bit more conservatively despite some seventh gear slides. Eight and six left, 130, five by tight, 60, the six right and long six left, 150, it's a long six left here. The new Corolla of John McCarthy and Dan McGuire had an unlucky start to the season with an off on the very first stage. But this time, they set the fastest time of 6 minutes 56 seconds, a full 10 seconds quicker than anyone else. Another crew with a mishap on the opening round was Dermot Kelly and John Brennan, who equaled Kevin Lynch's time on this stage, albeit with a steering problem they sustained from the Carrick accident. Right, left the hairpin right. Fresh air, 400 down here. Square left. Kevin O'Kane and Martin Hanna, also a crew who crashed out on the first round, and this has dented the confidence of the Tyrone driver, with over half a minute down on the leaders. Sliding and gliding his hard car is the ever-saluting John Shanahan, with Lee McLaughlin on the notes, giving a run in a Lancer as a change from the Group N winning Impreza. We're on square left, 100. Small crest, 150, past junction. And a three left over bump, 60. Repeat, three left over bump, 60. Pat Norris and Declan Tumulty are never to be discounted once they get into their stride. The Selvage driver has a lot of experience, but only made a comeback to the championship quite recently. And unfortunately, they retire on stage one. This sideways driving has just caused Tommy Kiley and Michael Cuddy to puncture their escort, which will obviously cost them some time and hopefully won't damage the back axle.
Last season's fastest two-wheel drive team, Brian Lawler and Peter Cavanagh, have upgraded to more power this year, and it shows as the Wicklow man is still finding the escort a bit of a handful on the loose surface. Rooms for about 60. 60. Three right long and two left. 60. One right, 170. Double caution. Chris Pope. Regular tarmac entrant Patrick Elliott and Sean Moriarty from Cabin are trying to mix it with the gravel competitors, but are over a half a minute off the pace in this highly competitive event. Go like f go along here. 60, flat crest, 150 up the middle, over rough. 60. Two left, 200. Through the piers into turn square right. 40. It's been quite a while since a Metro 6R4 has been in the Irish forestry, and Dennis Biggerstaff and Derek Brannigan make a welcome return with the 20-year-old Group B supercar. Stephen Moore and Tony McHugh overtake the stricken Lancer of Kieran Malloy and Brian Boland, who retire when the car refuses to rev over 4,000 RPM with fuel pressure problems. Trevor Harding and Charlie Boland have just acquired a Subaru and enjoying their transition to four-wheel drive but will suffer from transmission problems later on in this stage. The ever-entertaining Paul Mulcahy and Carl Bowman can always be relied on to put on a show for the spectators while the other competitors try to figure out where he gets his stage times with such sideways driving. The flame-throwing Lancer of R. McHale and Jerry McGonagall is being used on this event for the crew to get some mileage under their belts in preparation for the British Championship, but lose some time when they break a rear shock on this stage. James Coleman and Owen O'Neill are getting more and more competitive with each event, despite some trips into the scenery. One right party, four right titans and a six right titans. Four right, yeah, yeah. right titans and a six right titans, all inside. Ray Benskin and Pato Walsh are the current leaders in the two-litre class and with some solid performances. Not bad when you've been competing for over 30 years. Andrew Mackerel and Richard Cassidy were unlucky enough to puncture at midpoint on the first stage and struggled for remaining stages to make up time. James Cribben and Sean Haid had a poor time on the first stage after a close call at this square right. Turn square right, don't cut, now is 150. Keep ah. going, keep going, keep going. Open five right. John Reed and Brendan Green were putting in their usual good performance and leading the class. trip from America is slowly getting used to his new car in the Irish woods. An 80, left one long this tight. Right six, 80, left one, this long and tight. This long, don't cut too much. And 200, small crest. Bob Scanlon and Adrian DC were fighting tooth and nail with the similar car of Patrick Elliott, but is chasing him hard with a handful of seconds between them. The noise of the anti-lag of Patrick Price's Lancer may concern some of the spectators, but he has no problems hearing the notes called by navigator Dermot Falvey. Eddie Gary and Kevin Kelleher have hired a Mitsubishi Lancer for this event to compete in the two-litre class, but it's the two-wheel drive escort of Ray Benskin, who still leads the category. And one right of a small crest, and one right long again, into 150, and two right. 150 now, two right into four left, two right, four left, five right. Local crew John Mead and Kevin Kearney are putting their local knowledge to good use with their current second in class position in their Peugeot 205. And 
Andrew Corso has hired the escort of Noel Lappin and has swapped seats as he usually navigates. He's proving that he is as good in any seat of the car. Also in a higher car is John Fleming and Donal Mullins from Carrick and Shore. Another crew hoping to take advantage of the local knowledge, but familiarity breeds contempt as they push maybe a little bit too hard. Two rides on cut into sudden turn half and left. It is rough and tight. Forty out of it. Forty, tight continues, bumping caution, six left, very right, tight. Take your time, take your time. Right, okay, okay, go anyway. Kevin, you're lying third overall at the moment. Are you happy with that result? Yeah, we're, we're fairly happy, but it's just that we have uh, an ongoing problem. Um, we're not too sure what's happening. The park yard's cutting on a nightly power. I don't know, it's, uh, I just can't put my finger on something. Hopefully now it's service will probably do something. How much time do you think you might have lost? Well, it's, it's, ha it's, it's hard to say. It's happened uh, several times through the stage, so it's hard to know. But, you know what I mean, no point in making excuses. We need to uh, see what we can get done here now and get out and have a go at it again. Fine, how's the morning going so far? Uh, not too bad. Uh, we've done two stages. The third stage there was cancelled. I think uh, Kevin Lynch and myself were the only two cars to get on the stage. The double O car went off, so it's not too bad. The first stage we had a bit slow out of the blocks, and then the second stage we had a, we had a really good try in it. John, you have a six-second lead after the first loop of stages. How do you think the morning's going for you? That's right. We're very happy. I was extremely cautious on account of our accident in Carrigan Shore. So to get to town, we got in the first stage. Certainly surprised me. Fair play to Brian Murphy. We probably treated the second stage with a bit too much caution, and we dropped five seconds to him. Uh, we didn't compete in the third stage because it was cancelled. So really the pressure, it must be on us now because Brian has had a run through that stage. So he's going to be familiar with it and we'll be going into it blind. Dermot, you had a bit of hard luck in Carrick too. How are you finding the stages this morning? Uh, they're all right. It's just as, um, you know, steering rack is a bit damaged since the last end. It's just a bit stiff, you know, and we haven't the confidence we should have as well. So. Therefore, our pace isn't the best, but... You're not happy with your time? Not really, no. Yeah, but we'll, we'll leave with it for today. Do you think it'll pick up then in the next loop? Shall we see what we can do? I will tell. And so the results after stage three. John McCarthy and Dan McGuire are leading by six seconds. But will they be able to keep that lead? Join us after the break when On The Limit Sports returns right here. For those who don't know much about this a prize, can you tell us a bit about it? Originally there was 900 entered and uh, it was narrowed down to 90. We split into two weeks and two courses and uh, we had to uh, do three rallies and two test trials. And and have you been rallying for long, Owen? Yeah, I started karting when I was eight and I'd done, the, I'd done five years of that. Then I moved into autocrosses and now I'm into rally now. And I believe recently West Cork was one of your biggest rallies. How did you get on there? Yeah, first, uh, first rally you know, I was in the Group A 1400. It's in a few zone on six and I won class. 150 downhill, double caution, two right, it's a four left, it'll be two right, it's a four left, and five right, and sudden turn here up and left after it. After the service halt, it's car number one, Kevin Lynch and Francis Regan, who are chasing hard with just halfway to go and 28 seconds in arrears. After winning round one, they need to keep up that momentum. Brian Murphy and Joe Downey are hoping to turn the tables on Lynch, but they are a mere six seconds off the leaders. James Murphy and Con Mulcahy are the highest placed escort and just one second behind Lynch. Five left, forty, four right, five left, over four and six right, hold, forty, four right, eighty. The car in front is a Toyota, and John McCarthy and Dan McGuire increase their lead by a further ten seconds. That's three seconds quicker than their first run over Comborn. Dermot Kelly and John Brennan languish in fifth position, but still have no confidence in the steering of their Ford. They're tight, tight. Continues for 200 in Titans. Pumpy 250. Five right. Don't call in 70 turn half and left. Ties over rough. 
Kevin O'Kane and Martin Hanna still trail the leaders as they too try to get back some confidence after their recent excursion. John Shanahan and Mee McLaughlin almost overcook it, but still have a commanding lead in Class 8. At the four left open long, 60. Two left, two right. Hey, two left, two right, two left and one right over Class 60. And a helping right tightens. There is trouble ahead for Brian Lawler and Peter Cavanagh, as for the first time in many events, they struggle with axle problems. Two right continues, a hundred. Double caution, two right down, cut, crest bump. And two right long, 60. Dennis Biggerstaff and Derek Brannigan take a very cautious line in their metro as they just burst a rear brake pipe, limiting the braking of the 6R4 to just the front wheels. Stephen Moore and Tony McHugh are having a great battle in the class with John Shanahan and are desperately trying to catch him whilst only three seconds in arrears. Patrick Elliott is improving with each stage mile and being guided by Sean Moriarty, they are on the podium of class eight behind Moore. Into stay mid at the junction, into another unseen jump, 250. Level 40. 40. 40. That was very well driven, lad. Paul Mulcahy continues to dominate his class and continues to extend his lead with each stage in his 16 valve starlet. Aaron McHale still struggles to make up for lost time with the suspension breakage earlier, but lying 12th overall is a respectable enough position to be in considering. James Cribben and Sean Haight continue their way with no such problems to report, and finishing the event is their priority. Two left into one right, 200. Stay mid over bumps, 130. Long two left and long two right together. Repeat, long two left, long two right together, 80. Bob Scanlon throws the Mount June Mitsubishi around the Mitchellstown stages, but loses time to the leaders and is just one step away from the podium finish. John Reed's escort is beginning to get a bit smoky. Maybe it's time for an engine rebuild, but hopefully not before the end of this event. The multi-sweep escort does exactly what it says on the tin as James Coleman sweeps his way to second position in class, only a handful of seconds behind Reed. Can he catch him? Three left, two right. Three left, two right. 80 then. Oh, you can't tell you. Three left here. Two right. 80 down into one left and 250 down the middle. One left, 250 down the middle. Bump and one left long into turn six right, six left. Pat Price continues with no problems to report, but is well down the order. Pat, so you're actually living in Atlanta, America. How do you find the time to come over here and rally on the Irish roads? Well, I work for an Irish company in American Moffat Engineering. So uh, I time me rallying in um, with uh, some business trips to, uh, to Moffat Engineering. Are you contesting the whole championship? I don't know yet. I'm taking it on an event-by-event -event basis, and it depends how... Uh, how uh, we get up to speed uh, because we're still really on a steep learning curve. One left three now. 100 right. Good hit, watch it. Good. 100 right, 150 left three. Eddie Gary is having his best result to date but has no chance of catching the class leader after he has a bit of a moment in the O'Leary Motorsport prepared car. Escape road, no? One left, two right, don't cut. Andrew Purcell's look almost runs out, but he recovers well with just a spin and loses little but precious time. A very measured approach is taken by John Fleming and Donald Mullins, who are looking to secure a third place in class three. Tyson's logged on the inside, he continues for 300. Keep it in, keep it in. Continues for 300. Stage five is the second run through Golden Bridge Wood, which loops around Knock Balanary Mountain and passes the historic Lean Lynch Monument. While stage six 
is a repeat of Kilworth Wood, the longest and hardest stage of the event. The final stage of the day and the pressure is on. Kevin Lynch fights to control the Impreza. Under braking, he takes fastest time by six seconds, but it's not enough to catch Murphy, despite losing a rear window. And it's with tidy driving like this that makes a winner, as Brian Murphy keeps the pressure on McCarthy. Another Murphy, James, but no relation is driving his four-wheel drive escort like it's a Mark II, but he still cannot match the pace of the Subaru. Four left and four right, repeat, four left and four right. Here you go. Five left slipping, five left slipping the six right, five left slipping the six right, two hundred. We're about to see the lead evaporate from John McCarthy as he stalls his Corolla and frustratingly loses valuable time to the eventual winner. Almost suffering the same fate, but it's experience that makes Dermot Kelly keep the power on in his escort to fifth overall. And two right and suddenly turn half and left. Two right and suddenly turn half and left. And three right tight. Kevin O'Kane continues on with a very lackluster performance, but a solid result and no dramas are a consistent way to collect points. John Shanahan just about manages to gather up his Lancer after nearly throwing it away, and with it, the lead of the class on the very last stage. Two right, and a sudden hip and left. Two right and a sudden hip and left here. And a three right tight, three right tight here, 80 dogs to turn hip and right titans. There's a hip and right titans. Dennis Biggerstaff bounces his metro and almost loses it on this downhill junction, but after many problems in the day with drive shaft and brake problems, he finishes a fine seventh overall. Stephen Moore is second in class up against the big guns of the WRC and Group A cars. Just 11 seconds adrift is tarmac specialist Patrick Elliott, who is 10th overall and 3rd in class. To the delight of the spectators, the steer from the rear starlet of Paul Mulcahy is 13th overall and wins his class by a whopping two and a half minutes. Local driver and class leader in the championship, Aidan Jackson bags another points maximum with a class win here by two minutes. Michael Nevin from Tullamore takes class two by a half minute and continues to lead his class in the championship. A hard charging Andrew Kearney with Robert Hughes navigating dominate their class and finish 24th overall, 11 minutes ahead of their nearest rival. The new CAD championship entrant from Cashel is Pat O'Connell and Paul Manton who open their account with a class nine win. Well, Brian, you've certainly proved you can do it, winning the rally here today by over half a minute. Surely now that's given you an urge to continue on in the championship. Yeah, well, we decided after Carrick and Shore that we would, we would compete in the next two rounds of the championship, was here, which is here, and then Wicklow. We'll possibly try and get a few more in, but uh, the priority is the Tarmac Championship. So McCarthy's loss is Brian Murphy in Kevin Lynch's gain, who now tie overall in points. But with Murphy's co-driving commitments, can Lynch keep up the performances to capitalise? Watch this space. 